Okay, it's Final Fantasy 15, episode Duske, I guess is how it's pronounced. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to be playing this a little bit different than what I do normally, because normally I try to at least play my games on the PC in some, form, in some form, and I could do that with this game, using the hardware that I have and the recording equipment I have and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's going to be a little bit different because this is a PlayStation 4, or, yeah, 4 game. <laughs> so, I'm playing it on that, and I am feeding that video into a PC because I don't really like the PS4's uh, encoding hardware for Twitch and all that kind of stuff. And I'm using a microphone that I normally use for my other recordings on my PC stretched across the room. Blah, blah, blah. Needless to say... I'm saying this because, well, it isn't really needless to say, I'm saying this because I can't cue the microphone, so it's going to be on all the time, so you may hear me making noise and all that kind of stuff while I am playing through. So let's jump into this game, overwrite the previous save. Now this is sort of a demo, a well in advance preview of the game Final Fantasy XV that was released as part of a another game. Uh, the uh, PSP game, the Final Fantasy game that was re-released for the PS4 about uh, uh, maybe it was what, eight, nine months ago or so. This game itself won't actually be released until September, so they still got some time to work on it, but this was uh, quite a while ago. Hopefully the, um, you know, hopefully the loading gets a little bit better by then, but you know, bleh. I'm also hoping that you don't pick up too much on this microphone, the volume coming off of my television. So if you do, you may hear a slight echo. I don't think it'll be too much of a problem because it's on the dead side of the mic, the TV is. But, you know, it's still a good chance you're going to hear something. Progress bars are such bull crap. They typically don't mean anything. See, this one's stalled. Oh, oh, oh it rushes through the second half. <laughs> If only somebody hadn't wrecked the car. Unbelievable. I would hate to be that guy. Oh, come on, don't be that way. You know I didn't mean to do it. Of course not. Sabotage is far beyond you. It's futile. It's futile. Rise and shine, Rise princess. And shine, princess. Tremors. Tremors. Now you did it. Just now call me tight. Just call me tight. <clears throat> uh. Morning there, buddy. Morning there, buddy. Eyes open. Eyes open. And he's up. And he's up. Not technically Not up. Technically. Not technically Not having our technically automobile, having repaired, our automobile and repaired and heading to Corsus then? No turning back now, no your, turning highness. Back now your Highness. Gotta pay his Gotta enormousness, pay his enormousness a, visit. a visit. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder what it's like outside. Wonder what it's like outside. Uh, <sighs> wow! wow. <laughs> Couldn't ask for better Couldn't weather. Ask for better weather. Ah, good day for walking. Aren't we lucky? Aren't we lucky? 
We're well short of the amount well due, short, I'm afraid. We need to think bigger, like behemoth big. Hunting down its horns could get us the money, if it doesn't get us killed. Good worry. We're as good as dead without the car anyway. Huh. Might already be a lost cause. Hey, if Cindy says she can fix it, that's good enough for me. And since she's gone to all the trouble of servicing it nearby, we need only concern ourselves with one thing and one thing alone. The money. Simple enough. We hawk whatever we hunt till we come up with the cash, then fetch the car. Okay, we can start playing now. And they gave us a quest. Now, there are a couple of quests that you can do in this game, in this demo, but the Behemoth quest is the big one. So, what has happened... Oh, jeez. They're going to make me do this... <laughs> Huh. Huh. Yeah, we're moving. What has happened is their car has broken down. They seem to be blaming the tiny blonde one. I guess nice. his, uh... What do you say we check this out? What do you say nice. we check this out? Ignis, nice. maybe? Nice. Prompto. Okay, it's Prompto. I, I don't really know these guys' names. Hey, take a look. Hey, take a uh, look. Hold up a sec. Hold huh? up a sec. Huh? Well, it's well, not it's far from here. Not far from here. Okay, yeah. These guys want to go and hunt Behemoth because their car is broken down and it's going to be expensive for them to replace. Now the thing is that the in most of the earlier Final Fantasy games, it worked in the kind of JRPG standard of you go and you kill monsters or people or whatever. And when they die at the end of the fight, you go and are awarded a an amount of gill or whatever they call it to um, to go and use as your money, that kind of thing. And you know, it's it's sort of like the standard JRPG fare. So it's it's not really. Um, it's kind of a normal thing, but you know, that never really made any sense. So other games in the series have gone and tried to change that around by having situations like, like you're paid a salary or anything like that. In this game, it takes a bit more of like an MMORPG route in the sense that, yeah, you kill enemies and that is the primary way that you're going to gain money. But for the most part, Killing money, enemies just doesn't award you money. You take stuff off of them and you use it to, uh, and you sell it to shops or whatever in order to gain your, to gain your cash. Also, notice a difference in this game from previous entries in the series in that the tile, the battles are not. Uh, yeah, they're not the active time battles, they're not turn-based battles, or the weird sort of, um, weird kind of hybrid between the two that we saw in Final Fantasy XIII or anything like that. I'm controlling this guy, jumping over these enemies, issuing attack orders. It's an action RPG is what it's turned into. It's no longer a turn-based series. And note uh, another rather significant change from any of the series before. I guess maybe like 13, 2, or 3, or whatever, may have gone in this route as well. But 
Well, we're not in a the sort of extraordinarily linear story uh, progression that we seem to have, uh, it doesn't seem like we're in that sort of ultra linear progression anymore. Because, I mean, look at this environment here. I had no real reason to go this way other than I want to get to the gas station so we can take a look at the car that we have to go and fix. But check out the size of this environment. Now, almost, no, of course not. Gas stations are the same wherever you go. That one looks more like the gas station that time forgot. Look a tad out of place in the Crown City. Gotta love that smell, though, right? Gotta love that smell, though, right? Not everything that you can see is something that you can actually reach because, I mean, obviously there is an edge to the map, but there are a lot of, uh, I'm going to ignore those guys, but I mean, the size of the environment is large, and this is the environment we're going to exist in for the, for the um, entirety of the demo. And I start to wonder what the final game is going to be like. Is it just going to be a large number? Like, you move from one of these areas to the other, to the other, to the other, and that kind of thing. And it never really gets like a Skyrim or Fallout type of open world. But it does give you a little bit more of like, maybe um, old school World of Warcraft open kind of environment where... Yeah, it was open, but between moving between areas and areas, you had to take... A very narrow sort of pathway to get through them. <laughs> Let's go grab. So I'm starting to wonder about that. Ribs. Nutrition, gentlemen. Nutrition, gentlemen. His Highness could certainly do with some green in his diet. Let's nice see about that. First, let's see if we can First, score some spicy food. Yeah, can't get on there. And I'm just wondering, like they did say, the developers said that you will be able to run from one end of the map to the other in one continuous path so you don't have to um, there aren't going to be like loading screens between moving between environments there will be loading screens when loading like different scenes and stuff so it's not entirely without loading but what is this? alright it's a gas station, it's kind of weird eh? here's our car how goes it, Cindy? Hey there, good to see ya. Any luck with the car? Don't need luck when you got skill. She's almost ready. How about y'all? We've been unable to raise the money as yet. Well, take your time. It's no rush at all. I hate to charge you, but we gotta stay in business somehow. We broke it. We bought it. She's a fine She's one, a this, fine girl girl this girl of yours. And she won't take nothing she less than the best parts. Only one way to Only do it, and to that's do to do it right. To do it right. All, things All things considered, you're getting a steal. Yeah, don't think we don't know it. When we finally pay our bill off, we'll throw in a dinner, too. Best save that for Papa. When I told him y'all broke down again, he was redder than Rama. Okay, so she's going to be fixing the car. Now, oh, look at that. What's that about? I can't do that. Notice something else about this game. It has a very modern-ish modern feel to it. Like, here's a camper. Here are plastic lawn chairs. There's an automobile, it's a gas station, it's a truck. Mm -hmm. oh, throat's a little parched. There's an ice machine, tires, store, radio, fans, all that kind of stuff. This game is just littered with examples of things that you would think would exist in the modern it's world. Or at least, Tonto. Tonto. I mean, right in some there. ways, like they... Right the architecture and uh, automobiles and all that kind of stuff looks like 1950s kind of technology and that kind of stuff. But it has a, like a real world feel to it, even if it is slightly awkward, like the way that that truck looks and all that kind of stuff. The series has, in fact, 
gone and done that kind of thing before, but just never quite to this extent. Like, Final Fantasy, uh, what was it, uh, 8 had a lot of towns that liked automobiles and that kind of stuff. But then you turn around and you look at the horizon, you see all this weird geology and that kind of, like, this, these arching things jumping out of the ground. Like, what the hell is that? And there are gigantic monsters, sort of like, like, almost like living in Jurassic Park or something. And that kind of, uh, <laughs> changes a little, like, gives it a very, almost, like, how to describe it really it's a modern world but it's not it's a modern world that has these weird sort of fantasy elements and I mean I'll I'll, I'll hold my my uh, judgment on that until after I get a chance to play the final game see what that kind of thing is actually like rather than uh, just So, yeah, where, are so tonight? where are we staying tonight? Where are we staying tonight? Here works. Here works. Camp it is. Camp it is. Yeah, here it doesn't work because this is not a camp. I gotta go all the way over there to make camp. Now notice we've also gotten to multiple fights so far, but something that hasn't happened is our characters haven't leveled up. And that's because, well, leveling up doesn't just happen at the end of a fight. Let's do it again. I'll show you what I mean. And you don't want to be caught around running around at night when you're at a bit of a lower level like I am right now. Because I haven't given myself the opportunity to level up. My characters are still at the base level at the beginning of the demo. So when nightfall comes, I might be getting into trouble running past the lake and all. There are a lot of monsters that come out at night and everything becomes dangerous and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to want to get there. But look, we're gaining experience points, but notice nobody's gaining a level. So I gotta get my ass over to that camp, that campsite, and set up camp, and then that, from the camp, we can go and level up our characters. Oh, I got tired. Now, I have the ability to switch between weapons and stuff, like this is maybe not the best weapon for these little enemies. But this one here, Dragoon Jump, he'll hop up into the air then come down. A little hard to take out fast enemies like that. Drain Blade, boom, nice. Uh, Tempest is a pretty good all-around ability because it's fairly quick and sort of works almost like an area of effect attack, attacking enemies all around you, you're in the middle of a cluster of enemies, and great, yeah. They live damage everybody once. Not the seer also has the ability to sort of warp around to enemies, whereas the other characters who you can't control, by the way, they have to run up and attack, but I can like, boom, I warp my way to there so I don't have to waste my time chasing after them and all that kind of stuff. See, we've gotten claws and all that kind of stuff, and that's the garbage that we can sell. That's the kind of garbage that we can sell to the, um, to the shopkeepers and stuff to get our money. Also notice that we've been into a lot of fights, and we've taken quite a few hits. But our characters, while not at full HP, it's a little hard to tell, because they've taken only a little bit of damage. But they are almost at full health. That's because you won't actually take any damage in this game, like proper damage, until your HP has been depleted. Then, at that point, if enemies continue to attack you, then you will lose like, your sort of maximum HP. And the more and more times you get knocked down, the lower your maximum HP is going to be and the easier it is to take you out the next time. And if all four of your members get knocked down at once, then I guess that's your end of your journey there. So just this one. 
Yeah. 15 seconds. Say you don't want to... You want to avoid situations where you just keep getting drawn in the fights and fights and fights that you're not prepared to. That you're not healing your characters frequently enough. But they also give you certain benefits to spending a lot of time fighting a lot of enemies between times in which you may camp, which when you could restore your HP and all that kind of stuff. It's night time and it's dangerous at night. So... I'm going to just make camp now. It's part of a uh, mini quest anyway, so... Sec. Okay, when you make camp, you'll get a chance to eat some sort of a food. Now, depending on what kind of enemies and how many enemies you've killed and stuff, the food's going to be different. Uh, the better food you get, the better boost you get for the next day. So we got Potluck Stew, that's given us two out of three abilities. It's not too bad. It's bad time. It's rest. It's bad time. Huh. Now most of my characters gain levels there. Not too many because I didn't go through a lot of level ups and that kind of stuff. And it kill a whole lot of enemies. If I really wanted to, which I may do before the next time I rest. Now hold on. some more experience but you know we're not gonna be able to use that again until the next uh until the next time we make camp okay it's no mini map no quest markers set destination for um that eh, that's not too far away This way, if the this map's way. anything to go off. Alright. So, Deadeye is a behemoth, a sort of commonly reoccurring enemy that occurs in the Final Fantasy series, usually as like a fairly late in the game <laughs> enemy that you encounter. That, um, uh, oh, it's usually solo and it's usually pretty powerful. This game seems to be a little bit different. Now I'm not entirely sure if this demo... Oh, look at that. Magitech troops, they seem like they're robots, so we don't have too much of a problem with killing them. It's a drop ship that'll come down and uh, drop off some of these Magitech guys. Time for killing. They were clustered together pretty good. Uh, did quite a bit of damage to them before they uh, had a chance to really do anything. <laughs> Dead got a flag. Who's well with Pretty good amount of experience there. Didn't take any damage, so we are good to go. Curious. It's almost got my attention. Got my attention. You guys up for it? 
You guys up for it? We better stay on our you toes. Better stay on our toes. That was magic site near the lake. I don't know if I want to bother doing that. I kind of want to find that behemoth. It's a rusty bit, that's not it. Well, I mean, there are other... There are other mini-quests that we could do. We're not necessarily going to spend a lot of time doing them because... I mean, although it'll probably give you rewards, it just is not a full game. So it's not, there's not much of a point to me going and doing all the little mini quests. Look at this. Fascinating. What? What? I'm no tracker. I think it went that way. I think it went that way. Claw its way through that rock. Does that seem like something you want to follow? It's, uh... Set another destination. Taking this thing on in its current shape, in our current shape, would be a bit of a mistake. So I'm going to make sure I kill a few enemies on the way. Like these things. Oh, well, there's more enemies here than I thought. First time I played this demo, uh, I didn't really have a grasp of the whole um, leveling up thing. So I didn't make camp when I should have, and I ended up getting drawn to a fight at night with a whole bunch of goblins and the magic tech troops kept dropping and more and more and more and more and more enemies kept coming in and spilling in and I, like, I'm almost done. I'm getting the hang of the fighting, but I'm not, um, I, uh, my character's like, Ignis there is, they were just kept getting knocked down and I was on the verge of losing and all that kind of stuff. And I finally went and made camp after getting involved in way too many fights. And I just friggin' gained so many levels that the rest of the game just became so much easier. Now, uh, maybe that's not the best way to do it because it did kind of get a little bit stressful because the, the battles can become overwhelming. It can be a little frustrating if you don't really understand the fighting and uh, you don't I understand I how that at night time everything becomes so I dangerous. I believe that is what they call a clue. Everything becomes more dangerous at night and I didn't understand that and I was wandering too close to the lake where monsters were spelling out of and like everything was just everything was just getting too hard. So I sort of uh stuck around for too long and survived only by miracle and gained a whole bunch of levels and after that like oh I understood what I was doing and my characters were stronger everything was great but uh, if there are times when I like I eventually did have to run from the fight because it was just too much <sighs> that is where I actually need to go I could go and I could find clues and stuff. What are you doing way back there, dude? I could find more clues and stuff like the one out there, but this is actually the direction I'm going to need to go. So, let's go this way. Oh, I can't go this way. Not yet. Okay, I need to find more clues. Won't let me through. Huh. Open world. <laughs> Does have to gate you in some ways, I imagine. I mean, uh, there are certain trappings when it comes to an open world, and one of the things I'm a little bit concerned about maybe is like, how is the story going to progress through the game if I am going to have like an, uh, a massive level of freedom to move around and stuff like that? Then again, I don't. I really don't know how much freedom that's going to end up being. But if I'm able to go wherever I want, whenever I want, how is the storyline progression going to work? Because typically, you sort of, when the writers and all that can't really control 
progression of the player, and it kind of has to, by its very nature, has to make the storyline gruesome. Yes, sir. Then again, as we can see here, there are potentials to gate the player. They don't, uh, that was where I needed to go, but I can't go there yet, because there's some more stuff that I need to see before. And I, I guess I'm the last one. Need me some clues. Knocked, come here. 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 There we go. Uh, I hope it can't smell my fear. Can't smell my fear. All right, there we go. There's another. Uh, find the source of the commotion. I think that'll let us in to where we needed to go now. There is a building over in that direction. So let's go check that out. Well, you know what? No, I'm gonna. I don't, I don't think we need to go there yet, so I'm gonna just go check out this commotion. Nah, that doesn't seem worth it. Yep, tied up. Who the hell puts a freaking fence? A barbed wire fence on the rocks. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, the behemoth moved through and knocked those trees down. So that's how we get through. Hey huh. now, looky, 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 looky. Well, well, we have its heading, at least. Guess we follow the trail. Yeah. Follow the trail. It cannot possibly be that far ahead of us. Yeah, let's, uh... Here we go. Easy as they come. Let's clean them up. Let's One of my guys is taking some damage, so I'm going to have to, uh, I could ignore it, because I guess it's not that big of a deal. I should maybe run back out of here and go and make camp because one of my characters is taking some hits and I do have enough experience points to gain some more levels. So maybe I should stop screwing around out of the other direction. I'll probably be alright, but um, you know. Ah, you know what? Screw it. We'll be alright. Demo's not that hard. And it'll give me that much more of a um, experience boost or, or uh, whatever when we finally do make camp after dealing with the behemoth. Hey, uh, like a... Doesn't look like a radio tower. Maybe a firewatch tower or something. Hey, look, feathers. Stuff. Oh, buildings. Knock. Knock. Yeah, you go and get killed.
seems like a bad idea. That's not the right way. It went the other way. Here we go. Here we go. Supposed to be chasing this thing down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now the behemoth is missing an eye on its was it right side. So. We're going to have to use that to our advantage. When it is facing its right side to us, then we have it. It can't see us, and when we attack it, it's going to uh, be attacked like it's off guard. Because we're attacking from its blind side. So we're going to have to use that to our advantage. I wonder how often that kind of thing is going to become an issue in the final game. Like, a lot of the bosses have like weak ends or weird little traits like that. Come on, kill it. A lot of these bastards. Wasn't thinking there were that many of them. Stabby, stabby. Stop dodging. Ugh, freaking Ignis went down again. Not making my life easy, buddy. Is everyone else gonna help me out here? Well, I gotta take all of these out myself. Kill! Again, a good amount of uh, experience points from this one. Thought it was over. What did we get? Uh, 886, not bad. It's getting foggy in here for some reason. I thought there was something I could pick up. Exercise due caution. Exercise due caution. Yeah, due caution. Yeah, I wasn't going to do any of that. Yeah, hey, uh, fence. Oh, gotta jump. <laughs> oh, yeah.
This seems like a great idea. Now, if we um, get to stay on its its blind side, but even if you still do that, you get too close to it, it will sink here there, and well, you don't want to get discovered. So we're gonna have to follow it through the fog. Don't let it get far away. If it's too far away, then uh, we're gonna fail the mission. Shit. Um. There we go. It's getting away. Where are the other guys? close. Huh. I'm not sure how close, but it was close. Yep. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. I don't know if that's even a good idea. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have done that. Get my Metal Gear solid on. Get closer, get closer. The time of day and that kind of thing, the day-night cycle, is sort of like an ever-rotating thing. I'm not quite sure how much time it takes for the day-night cycle to cycle through, but making camp will accelerate it. And, um... So there's a possibility that if I had waited the appropriate amount of time, or maybe not made camp and just headed right here beforehand, I'd be seeing this whole thing at night. Instead of, uh, instead of during a daytime foggy thing. Alright, it's getting away. Sam's right side. Can't get through there. Yep. Getting away. Yep. Gonna have to be on its left side for this one. Come on, keep going. I don't know why we're waiting. I don't know what they're expecting to find over on the other side. Oh, there's something over here. I want it, whatever it is. Feather. Oh, he's gone. I think there might be something... Oh, there's a chain link fence all around here. Weird. A little rusted, but overall in an alright condition. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be pleasant. Squeezing through a narrow hole. How the hell did you get ahead of me? All in a day's all work. In a day's work. You're all up there. Huh. Well, fog faded away pretty quick. Holy shit, it's not even back there. That's, uh, weird. Okay. This way. This way. So what's the plan now, genius? <laughs> huh. 
Are you going to tell us the plan or just text us the plan? Coming up with a plan on the fly like this, before you even saw what you had to work with. Highness. Highness. Focus. Focus. Uh. Uh. Yeah. By all means. By all means. Okay, the plan is simple. Not this. We'll go out there and attack the behemoth and then draw it back here. Then I will jump up there and grab a hold of that. And uh, hold on. This guy will jump down and... Uh, not that guy. Where is he? He's over there somewhere. Jump down and attack it from its blind side. Then this dude will blow up that fuel tank, which so has fuel even though we didn't check. And it'll blow up and kill the behemoth, or it, it'll damage the behemoth, then we'll jump into the final attack and kill the some bitch. So, sounds like a perfect plan, let's do this. Out of here. Oh, do that, you son of a bitch. Not working out for me. <laughs> Get up. It's not what I had in mind. It's because I locked on the stupid thing like an idiot and it just messed me up. <laughs> Get up there. Stop blocking on the fucking thing. God damn it. <laughs> oh, not working out. He'll be alright. We'll be great. This will be fine. Somehow this has failed catastrophically. I can't warp up there. What's going on? I must have done something horribly wrong. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I can do it anyway just by running up here. Or not. Something horribly wrong here. Okay, the plan didn't work for some damn reason. Oh my 
god. <laughs> yes, yes, I get it. I'm trying to cut and run. <laughs> Didn't, what the f fuck happened? We're gonna do this again. <laughs> Come on, load it up. Loading. Loading. What are you doing? All in a day's work. All in a day's work. <laughs> right. This way. This way. Yeah, yeah, I got it. We'll go through this whole thing again. Gladio. Gladio. Huh. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. One more. Highness. Highness. Focus. Focus. Uh. Uh. Yeah. By all means. By all means. There. That's what I was doing before. It didn't friggin' work. Okay, I should be able to attack this thing and then warp to the different points without having to worry about running from it. But, you know, that may not always work. Let's warp to there. And warp to there. Boom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We got some real chemistry some here. Real That's chemistry what I call here. teamwork. I call Impeccable. Teamwork. Well, that didn't work. It took me a chance to fight it. It's getting dark out. This is no time for a nap. Flashlights turned on. Get ready for the big Okay, attack from its right side. And we should be able to do a little bit more damage. Now 
this thing is tough. Much tougher than we are. Oh, took a hit. Alright, plan has still failed. Getting the hell out of here. Time to cut and run! Time to cut and run! Not! Get out of here! Haha, get the hell out of here! Oh shit! Look ahead! Huh. All present and accounted for. Present and accounted for. Well, that failed. Hmm.